Brett, take yourself off of mute for our guest's sake. I mean, I'm okay with not hearing you, but our guests <laughs> should be hearing you. <laughs> okay. Welcome, what? everybody. Two, two chaps, <laughs> many cultures and technological challenges. And Christian on his bouncy office chair. All right. This is going to be a fun episode. Hello. Right. How are you? Well, I said, how could you not start it? How could you not start a day in a good mindset when you've got Sepalot to be uh, bouncing along to? Another another right. shout out for our musical contributor, Sepalot, also known as Sebastian Weiss. Sebastian Weiss, absolutely. Sebastian. Go and check it out, Sepalot. On I often have it playing in the background. It's great. It gives me a good mindset. There you go. See, Speaking it works. Music Speaking works. Of mind. Speaking of mindset, uh, I, uh, it, our discussions over what we did over the weekend brought to mind, um, actually it was before the weekend, my good learned friend here, um, it, basically over there, said uh, said that uh, we posted some p pictures of an activity that uh, you, took play, you took part in over the weekend. Uh, and it kind of looked like just maddening chaos. It was just uh, painting and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my weekend are like sometimes. <laughs> no, actually, they're not. Uh, I did some. It was for my wife's birthday. So we were trying to find an activity that would engage her in something that she hadn't done before and would be fun for the family as well. And we came across a... I don't know what that's called, um, a place, I guess, where they allow you to go wild and mad with colors. And it's called the Splatter Studio. I'm not sure how many cities have that here in Atlanta. It's, it's a thing that's been around for maybe a year or so. And you walk into an, basically an empty cubicle or an empty cube of retail space, what could be a retail space. They have a, a front desk and then there's a, the whole room is decked out with white tarp or that kind of clothy material that you hang in, in, in freight elevators not to scratch anything. And it's all the way up to the ceiling and it's encapsulated with that, with that, uh, what's that called, that painter's cloth? It's a cloth type thing, right? So you're, you're in this dark space yeah, yeah, see, you got the pictures. What am I? Why, why should I explain this if it's there in the picture? Thank you. So, so you, 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 you see the mess we made, and you see those wooden pallets. They serve as an easel, and you hang your canvas there. And then they roll in these carts with, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 different types of um, colors. It's all, I think it's acrylic paint. And then they give you tools to transport the paint onto the canvas. And since it's not this art school type, you know, we're going to be really mindful of our color application. We're going to really go by the sketch. No, it's this, go splatter, splatter yourself. Silly. And that's an interesting experience I learned because so you, it's, it's, our called you know, splatter, it's called splatter a splatter studio. Splatter, Splatter Studio, Studio which, Splatter. which you kind of think that'd be a good horror movie title. Yeah, I, I would, <laughs> this, this, this might not be the, it looked like the, the end of a horror movie, but it's not, it's, it's stage blood. Look, I mean, this guy on the right, Brigitte's there, but this, is, that a, is that a real person standing there in the light? Yeah, I mean, it's a real person. He's, he's wearing this hazmat suit, and he basically <laughs> comes in and swaps out the, the water buckets to clean your brushes. And there's always yeah. somebody there to make sure you make an even bigger mess. And he, he's also in charge of cleaning it up afterwards, which <laughs> I'm, I'm happy he was there. Eric is his name. Thank you, Eric. Eric, you're awesome. Good luck, um, good luck with that. Well, what I thought was interesting when I was asking you about it is that you said, you know, I started. <laughs> and uh, that's always a, yeah. that's always a problem when you say, I started with this idea, started writing letters, started started writing, and then look at the result. I mean, the, yeah, uh, here, here's my thing, right? This is this is what our daughter made. So she she you see that left half of, of that image that is all splattery, and cool. then she kind of framed it with a brush. And then she figured out, you know what? I'm gonna make a, a swoosh pattern on the bottom. So she decided to do this. You see, that's her result. Yeah. And on the yeah. left, on the left, I think that's my wife's as it was still running down the liquid paint 
bleeding into each other. The, the thing that I started out with is hey, you need to know that I am not necessarily the creative type when it comes to um, color and painting. I mean, I, I'm creative when it comes to uh, putting words to paper or on a keyboard and writing and making stuff up. But the, this, this traditional art creation, whether it be music or um, visual arts, that's not necessarily my strong suit. Or I have this high level of awkwardness to come over. And so I walk in there. Um, okay, let's see how this goes. Let's let's watch my wife and daughter how they do it. And then I thought, okay, let let's be, let's make something that I can use for marketing purposes. Maybe maybe I can create some something cool to hang on the office wall or or use as a social media post. So you see, my my the logo, which is basically the acronym of my company. So I took a blue that resembles the blue of the logo and took a brush and painted like TCM on the canvas. And it looked really good. like, yeah, this is a good start, Christian. You're, you're, you're putting structure down. See, this, this, this works. And then but they only give you tools that are not necessarily your, your painting tools, right? They're broad brushes like this. And then there is these, I don't even know what they're called, like the drummers that have these long bristles uh, that they use for, for the soft hi-hat yeah, movement. It's called brushes. I don't know what they're called. They're brushes, like long, long whiskers, yeah. kind of. And you, you, there's no, you can't draw a line with that. And it's not meant to be that way. You you dip it in the paint and then you just splatter it on on the canvas. So we all have channeled our inner Jackson Pollock, basically. Absolutely. And, yeah. Well, this and, is, and, yeah. Uh -huh. Go on. Well, as, as the paint was starting to hit the canvas, like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a mess. <laughs> and the whole the whole idea of keeping that one corner of the canvas clean for my corporate thing that went to hell in 30 seconds like this is not going to work so the the mind freak that i had was this i don't know how to do this and i need to do it right i need to follow a certain process and i don't know what the process is but i will figure it out and 2 minutes in it came clear to me Christian there is no process Right. The process the process is to let go of expectations. Let go of whatever it is. Make a freaking mess. My instincts kicked in and said, no, oh, this has got to be, I need to do this right. Nonsense. Making the mess was the cathartic thing. So uh, I was that's what that's the key, right? And I was thinking about how you started, how the mindset of how you started is I'm here, I have the goal, I have this. Uh, I, I, my frame, my goal is only going to fit in what my frame, my, how I frame it. Right. Which is, mm. which is interesting because I had just watched a video from a, do, uh, a, a Dr. Aliyah Crum, who is a Harvard professor, I think did a lot of work with Yale as well. You know, these smart people, they just farm themselves out to all kinds of colleges. And she did a Ted talk, um, about, uh, about, uh, mindset and it and it basically is frames it around stress and how we approach something that we that will be outside of a comfort zone we talked about this with uh, with with Andy, Andy Malinsky yeah. yesterday yeah. and and it was uh, so a couple of examples um a, a company where there was a great deal of like what we're going through now there's a great deal of stress around the need to reduce the workforce by a certain percent and uh, and the people in the company were two sets of people. It was an experiment done where they played them two different people, two different groups of people, different videos mm. around stress. This is a stressful time, right? This is a, a stressful time where people are, you know, under uh, under pressure to um, make a company survive. But when it comes to actually affecting real people, it does bring a lot of bring on a lot of stress. But the two videos were basically one framing it in terms of using the traditional way we think about stress. It's damaging. Um, it, it's like um, I've got. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off here. This was the message, right? This is basically stress damages performance, and so the the expectation or the messaging is that this will have a an, a detrimental effect to the outcome of the business. And, mm. and then the other one basically changed one word throughout the messaging was stress fuels right. performance.
departments. This is right. a starting, this can be a starting point. This can be a very big positive move for this company. And perhaps maybe in a longer term, provide more jobs than perhaps we're, we're losing in this short term 10% of loss. Right. So, it, so it was applicable to that. It was applicable to exercise where there was uh, an example. Somebody noticed that when they, you know, I, you know, you and I, when we were traveling, we stayed at a lot of hotels. We see people who are working in rooms to clean rooms after uh, each day. Um, and th there was the study about how those people approached their mindset of exercise. Mm. So they asked those people that did those jobs. I mean, it's hard work. You're in there, you're changing sheets, you're moving beds, you're doing all kinds of stuff. But they said, do you get, do you exercise often? And all these people said, no. Like they said, no, we don't exercise. And, 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 we, and we don't actually, you know, we don't get enough exercise. We're too busy working, we don't get enough exercise. But when they measured the actual, uh, the result of the, uh, of the, uh, effort they were putting in in their job, right. it was far and above more than you know than your average athlete. Af athlete. Mm. So the mindset was: think about your job as a, as a form of exercise. And you know, the when they followed it, the people lost weight. They 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 lowered their um, uh, any you know, problems with heart, uh, high blood pressure, and things like that. Mm. <laughs> Fascinating. So it just it just brought to mind when you were saying I went into this with this expectation, this right. this mindset. So I'm so it, the title of this episode is the best way to change your mindset, and is not perhaps looking back on what the result was, is to looking forward into what the result might be, um, it, and reframing it. That that was actually the, the, the most enjoyable piece of that uh, because. As I as I realized for myself, okay, let go of that expectation. That's not going to work. Um, I was curious. I became curious. So, what if I do this? And will this look good? And then I just experimented, which for some people is is a challenge because it, it's it's painting outside the lines, right? It's 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 not. This was not paint by numbers, right? So, <laughs> it it was the the the. Growth, my uh, growth, maybe not. Well, and I could use the word growth if we were related to business. But as I was going through that splatter process, I recognized that hey, th this is shaping up uh, to be good looking, and maybe if I do this, it might look better. And then I added something that looked horrible, and I said, like, okay, it's already on the canvas. I can't change it, so I can't take it off. So all I can do is add stuff. So how do I layer it? How do I work with the materials? How do I work with the tools to hopefully have something that I, I'm happy to look at at the end. And I never knew what it will, what it will be. My, my sister-in-law, who is a, uh, she, she does sculptures. She's a, a, a creative artist. She's, she's a visual artist. So she's a lot of sculpting. And she, she always says when, when she went with the chisel and the hammer to the block, to the stone block, it, it's a very cathartic experience because every, every single stroke of the hammer is a decision. A, a, irreversible decision because you'll chip off stone that you can't put back on so it's 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 a decision making machine because you have to decide with every single stroke of the hammer the same with painting apparently you have to make a decision every time you do something it'll stay on the canvas it's not like many of us who who work in the digital field where we we do something and then we edit it later and we delete it or we we massage it so we're happy with the outcome. No, in in this process, every decision is somewhat permanent or it leaves a mark that is, if you try to remove it, it'll make matters worse. So being okay with that and that that, that was really fun to to experience that and and I'm happy with the outcome. It it does not look like anything I thought it would look like, but. Uh, it's going to get framed and we're going to find a place to hang it. Absolutely. And the, the uh, sculpture thing is a great one because let's go back to what Mike Michelangelo said about the, the statue of David, right? He, mm -hmm. that, that statue was already in the marble. He just removed the excess. That's it, yes. you know. 
that's an, that's an amazing way to look at it. So he started with the mindset of there is something beautiful in here. I see it already. I, I see it inside. Mm. I just need to remove the parts that that are not are not valid, right? They're not uh, re- remove the, the the ugly parts, or maybe not even the ugly parts, but then the unnecessary parts for now to reveal what in, is is in my mind already. Mm. So right way. Yeah, we we have a term in 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 coaching that we say like, start with the end in mind, um, and it requires to envision what the end is. So it it. it it prompts the the coaching client to get clear on what their desired outcome is. If you yoga, no, who was it? Yoga, Yogi Berra, yoga, some, some baseball great in the past. That if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. So if if you don't know what the desired outcome is, then your process towards it will eventually mislead you because you, if you if you're going to find out on the way, then you. You could stray and have fun meandering. I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. But if, if you want to get something done, you want to know what it is you want to accomplish. What's your desired outcome? What do you want to have at the end of it? And start with that in mind and then let the process lead you there. So I didn't I didn't know what my desired outcome for this better thing should be. I thought it should resemble something of well, not beauty, but something that that is aesthetically pleasing to me. And as I told you earlier, 30 seconds into what I thought I should do, I recognized this is not going to work. So I said goodbye to that expectation and set a new expectation, set the mindset right and said, okay, whatever it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to be happy with it because I did something that I had never done before and I'm allowing my intuition to guide it. And hey, I got it right here, down here. Let me, let me pull it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not framed yet. It's not framed yet. And say what you want. I like it. All right. So <laughs> the, this, this is the result. Oh, it's great, and it does actually look like the pattern on the back of your uh, on your banner in the back. Look well, at that. Now that, you, now that you say that, well, maybe I should hang it this way. I don't know what's up or down. Who's who's to say? I don't know yet. Maybe, maybe <laughs> this way. Maybe that That's way. what I said. I, I said that way. <laughs> you said they have to be they have to be perpendicular or. What is it? Uh, it's portrait or landscape, right? The, the correct, correct terminology. Let's get correct. Anyway, good so fun. I mean, yeah. to, 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 to extend this into, into business world, I think my, my, my takeaway is that, yes, your processes matter. Yes, your organizational regimen is important. If you want to have predictable outcomes, you need to have a certain strategy in place that you can follow. I'm, I'm not shaking that at all. However, sometimes if... If you're in stress, as as Brett said earlier, if if there is a stressor to the system, if there's disruption, as we are all experiencing this year, 2020 might well go down in history as the year of disruption for many, many of us in in very different aspects of our lives. So if there's a stressor, um, you're going to fight it and, and try to contain it and waste energy on the stressor, or are you allowing that energy that's beyond your control anyway to enter the system and find a way to flow with it and and move around it. And uh, that, that is a practice that I'm still learning and some I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm still trying to fight certain stressors that come my way. And I also recognize that um, maybe it's better. It will serve me better if I just let a few things, allow a few things to pop up the way they are and find a way to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the other examples in the video, in the in the TED Talk, maybe I should link it up here. That would maybe. be nice. If Brad, I would like to watch it too. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I'm going to put it in the uh, put put it in the in the chat here. So, if, uh, um, then and it'll be there for anybody to look at. But basically, the the what the last one was about. Um, Oh, Becca Levy's um, work, and uh, she's an epidemiologist, but the, the work around aging and the, and the mindset around aging. Do you see aging as a period of, uh, well, it starts from birth, right? We start aging, but do you see it as a period of deterioration mm. and wasting and, uh, and diminishing, or do you see it as continuing aging as the opportunity for 
the attainment of wisdom, the uh, the, the growth of, of uh, thinking or having a wider set of um, information at your disposal to draw on, right? You, right. you certainly are far not maybe not smarter than when you're 20 you know when you're 50 than you are when you're 25 but you've just got more information right sure. um now the type of information you absorb is important you know this age of facebook and stuff like that that is we have to be very cognizant about our, our own filters what we let in mm -hmm. um, and uh, how valid it is and of course you know we're talking next week we're talking a lot about psychology and um we're talking to people who have spent years studying this uh the, these things you mean and people that are smarter than us people that are smarter than us and people that do science which science at the moment is not getting a good rap you know that that constant uh, that constant barrage that dr youtube is better than science now what i've just shared no, that's, only, that's only for people who never really wanted to pay attention in school anyway so let them have their moment um eventually yeah. but the beauty about science is you you can't fudge with it because eventually it'll bite you in the butt. Um, yeah. fa facts are facts as long as you, if you're okay manipulating them for your own good, and let, 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 I'm going to give you your moment. Uh, Car Karma's a bitch. She'll find out. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, I agree. You know, and uh, and I guess I've never done science as a as a pursuit, but I but I love the process. And the process is actually, but people think of science. I think. Andy mentioned it yesterday. Science is not an exact science, right? It's it, science is actually questioning things continually, right? Continually mm. re, uh, reassessing, retesting, you know, not challenging the the uh, the the um what what may have been what may have come before, right? And you mean the uh, Earth is not flat, then? Uh, no. Yeah, strangely enough, strangely enough, it's not. Great, great. Um, documentary recently i watched on that uh you know uh, but it, it but it is actually uh it, science is great because it's like yes it's not an absolute it's a it's a continuing evolution of information that takes new information and applies it to what's come before and test mm. retest the theory and i guess that's the problem you know the mindset of say a conspiracy theorist right and we're not gonna you know let's not um, conspiracy. Oh, we're, yeah. we're, gonna open, we're gonna open that door. Oh, no, right. We'll no, get a view until tomorrow. No. That's just an example of the mindset of saying, well, you know, they they talk about themselves as as like, well, I'm a critical thinker. Well, mm. you know, you're you're only critical of stuff that you don't agree with. Not that's the that's the thing. Is right. So scientists, uh, you know, scientists challenge stuff they agree with and they don't agree with. Both at the same time. Exactly. That's what I find fascinating about that mindset. So again, yes, getting back to that mindset, changing them. I, I think what I what I got out of this short video is just taking a step back and saying, what is the outcome I want, and how am I going to frame it in terms of not saying, oh, this is just going to be so much hard work, right? This is going mm. to be difficult. This is going to be a challenge. But saying, this is going to, this is going to really teach me a lot of new skills. This is really well, going to help. And if this is your mindset going in, if you're going in with that negative mindset, if, you, if you're going in with believing that it's going to be bad or negative, then guess what? That you yeah. create your reality, right? The, the words we tell ourselves, it, it, yeah. it creates our reality. And um, the future is made up. None of us have created it yet so it's out there so uh, as, as a human being and as you recognize that it's that, that we are able to to create part of our environment that we're not only subject to what's around us there's something that we can do internally to to make our world the world we want it to be then um if you once you realize that then you want to make up something that's great for you or you can choose to make up the stress damages your performance if you choose that Walk that path. I'm not going to follow you, but that's your choice. Don't make me responsible for your mindset. Um, or if you choose to, let it fuel your performance. Either way, it's up here. Mindset. That's right. Reverse the, reverse the, uh, the saying and, and say, I will see it when I believe it. Simple as that. That was, uh, is that, is that uh, who, who said that? I can't remember. I'm oh, terrible at Quotes don't, like that. don't don't quote me on quotes. All right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so many quotes. This went deep on a Tuesday morning. Can you believe it? Yes, yes that, that's the kind of stuff we do here. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Comments, yeah. questions, ideas, suggestions.
for topics, yes. for guests. How do you, how do you change on? your mindset? How, what's the best way for you to change your mindset? This exactly. Is, this is what we are the question we're posing to you today so thank you so much everybody for joining again and uh, if you're watching the replay again um yes put in your comments send us a note all those little kind of things that are scrolling on the bottom you can reach out to us that's where we subscribe, are subscribe people subscribe there's benefits to subscribing we haven't decided yet what they will be but there will be benefits to subscribing you'll be the first that's to know that's right absolutely all right mate Good to see you again. See you tomorrow, tomorrow. where we'll do it again. Have fun. Bye now. Bye-bye.